here with a former NASA astronaut and a Mexican-American engineer, Jose Hernandez. I'd like to go ahead and welcome him to the Global Risk and Threat Series Leadership Forum. Hola, Jose, ¿cómo estás? Muy bien. Muchas gracias, uh, doctora Adriana Sanford, por esta invitación. I'm very happy uh, to be here in the presence of uh, folks that are seeing us right now. Man, I wish this could be in person, but the current situation doesn't allow it. So I send every, everybody a virtual hug. As an astronaut, uh, we've had plenty of opportunities during our training where we actually work in isolation in small groups. Uh, some examples that I can give you is, for example, when you're an astronaut candidate and they're trying to determine whether you have the right stuff and you can work well together, they put you under stressful environments. And uh, some of those stressful environments, for example, is wilderness survival training where they'll put you in a small group and they leave you out in the middle of nowhere and you've got to hunt for your own water, your own food, and you're there for 14 days. They give you a satellite phone so that if there's some type of medical emergency, you're obviously uh, able to get extracted out of there. The other one they, where they put you at uh, also, which is highly stressful, is winter survival training. They take you to the mountains of Wyoming, from 10,000, 13,000 feet elevations, you're on cross-country skis. And here they do give you food, but they have food drops cleverly designed such that you have to uh, go, you can't come back in the same day. So you've got to pick up camp, base camp, and you got to create a new base camp. You do that for two weeks. Uh, and again, that's uh, a little stressful. Another one is they do a lunar analog mission underwater. We've got this uh, habitat. That, uh, that is a laboratory under 60 feet underwater where you're down there on a saturated dive and you're basically simulating like you're on the moon. You've got uh, Mission Control Houston uh, directing you. So you have a plenty of opportunities to work by yourself in small groups. You get medically isolated before a mission, two, three weeks before the mission, and then you're off away for two, three weeks in space. So we certainly have had a lot of opportunities to work and you have these type of activities so that you get to know and get comfortable with your crewmates and you learn everybody's strengths and weaknesses and that's how we complement each other. I, I came up with six points that are to me are pretty basic and some are very intuitive. Some of them say, oh yeah, we, we, you ought to do that. The first one is having a positive attitude. I think attitude is everything, Adriana. Uh, you got to look at the glass half full, not half empty. And so what has this pandemic given us? It's giving us the gift of time with our loved ones. Because who are we confined with? It's our loved ones. So now we're creating memories that otherwise we wouldn't have had the time to have created because we're always busy doing our own thing. But now we're all together. So let's cherish that and let's create these beautiful memories that you know, five, 10 years from now, we're going to look back and say, remember when we were all cooped up at home? You have to have good communication, Adriana. Uh, you know, uh, the fact that we're confined, uh, perhaps even tripping over each other, you know, it quickly makes your patient's barometer a lot more sensitive. And so what do you do? How can you fix that? Well, do the good old NASA way is that whenever you talk, and you give instructions to someone, uh, we tend to repeat the instructions that we were given so that the person that gave us the instruction understands that we understood and that we're about to do what he told us. And that verifies it. For example, when we're landing, when I'm landing the space shuttle, I got my two pilots, I'm the flight engineer. And uh, one of the uh, directions or, or, or instructions I give one of the pilots is, is, is I say, Kevin, uh, check ISO valve, landing gear ISO valve open. And what he does is, Roger Jose, checking ISO, uh, uh, landing gear ISO valve open. It is open, confirmed. Okay, what does that do? That confirmed that he understood it, he did it. It gives me peace of mind that he did it because we're in a life and death situation. So it's good to repeat these type of instructions. Now, at home, it's not a life and death situation, but... If I go and I instruct my kid, 
who's a senior in high school, I said, mijo, get up and mow the lawn, wash my car. Now we, we, we should mention that you have five children. Okay. Yes, so I'd I like to know how, yes. how this is running at home as well. Exactly. But, but if I was to say, mijo, get up and wash my car, uh, you know, feed the dogs and clean the garage and, uh, and do a bunch of other things. He's going to repeat back to me and said, Papi, you want me to wash the car, clean the garage, feed the dogs, and do all these things? When he tells me that, I'm going to realize, oh, man, that, that's probably an unreasonable request. I should take it down a notch. And I was, okay, Miko, at least wash the car and clean the garage. And, and you sort of de-escalate possible com uh, conflicts that could escalate into more tension within the family. By repeating it, you realize I'm making a request that's unreasonable. Let me bring it down a notch. And so, so good communication is, 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 is critical. How do you handle touchy subjects? How do you handle conflict? I call this at NASA safety timeout. It's a safety timeout. Whenever something you see that may not be safe situation, you call a safety timeout and then you regroup. So, 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 so that's what you do with that, Adriana. The next thing is you've got to create a schedule. Uh, even if you're not working, you still have to write what you're going to do that day. You're going to get up. I'm going to exercise. I'm going to run two or three miles or ride that bike. I'm going to read two chapters of my favorite book. I'm going to walk the dog. And, and, and you do that because it gives you the satisfaction at the end of the day to check it off and you could claim small victories. It, it feels so good to check them off when you do do them. And if you don't do it, you carry it over to the next day. And then if you did something you didn't have planned, you write it down and hey, that's extra credit. And then the next, the next thing is uh, number four is you bond with the family. Uh, create activities where you make every member feel special. Just like when you're at work, if you're a manager, you got to make your workers feel special and needed and wanted. You got to do the same thing with your family members and do something. The best way to do it is not to do something that interests you, but something that interests the individual members. For example, I have a daughter um, and uh, she's a fanatic in exercising. Okay. And I had a little weight bench in my garage, uh, but I didn't have any weights. So we tried ordering weights and guess what? They were all sold out. So what did I do? I took her to Home Depot. We came back with six, seven sacks of cement. We made some forms and we made our own weights. Now we have a functional gym at home where she and I both uh, I use it. You know, we're in a situation where the supplies and what we're used to buying may not be there. Maybe they're sold out. Maybe they're sold out for months. Yeah, and yeah. so we have to be very, very creative. And that's, that's correct. That's correct. You've got to be very creative uh, with what you have. And, uh, and, and, you know, that's how you entertain yourself and you keep yourself busy. Uh, and then when you do it, you enjoy it so much because you say, hey, this is pretty innovative and I'm really proud of it. And so you enjoy it so much more. I mean, I enjoy my garage gym a lot more than going to the health club now. And you have to set goals. I mean, if you're like me, uh, and I, I would venture to guess 99% of the folks already have their list of goals. And if you're like me, I would say that I always work on the top half and then the bottom half of the goals, I always say, well, you know, there's not enough hours in the day for me to work on them, but I'll get to them. And you, you basically never get to them. Well, now we have this great opportunity where the top half of the goals, there's probably some of them you can't do because of the situation we find ourselves. Well, so what does that mean? That means these bottom goals can move up and you can start working on them. You could learn how to play that guitar you've always wanted uh, online now. Uh, you can order your favorite book you wanted to read and you read it. And you can even binge watch a uh, a series on Netflix or Amazon, whatever, and and but the the point is that you set the goals and then you start knocking them off as well. The final point is you have to practice 
self-care, self-management. In other words, uh, if you're not healthy and you're not in a good position, how do you expect to be able to help others? You've got to help yourself first. You got to be in a good, happy place before you are able to help others. And so what's self-care, self-management? It means you have to take care of yourself from the perspective of having a healthy diet, uh, doing your exercises, uh, doing, uh, uh, taking your multivitamins, and keep yourself not only in a physical, but in a healthy mental state. And you do that, then uh, you're going to sort of transmit this confidence in the family, and you're going to keep the family very calm. Well, and to the extent that you are able to find a routine for yourself and for your family, that's going to become your new normal. We don't know how long this pandemic will last, and we don't know how long some of us are sheltered, some of us are able to go out, and then it spikes, and then we're back to being sheltered. Absolutely. And, and right now, there are companies that have decided that their employees are actually more productive working from home. I think they're finding out that they're just as productive at home, if not more, than being at work. And you know, I could, I could see that because I live here in the Central Valley of California, and Silicon Valley is, uh, is about a good hour and 45 minute commute. There's a, you know, we live in a bedroom community where a lot of folks drive to Silicon Valley every day and come back. That's like over three hours of commute time that you can take off if you work from home and you're much more productive. So, so I think uh, some companies are gonna be very smart and say, hey, stay at home and keep producing. My job always took me traveling. I travel a lot, but I haven't traveled since February when this uh, pandemic broke out. And at first, you're right, you know, uh, th th since when people are, are trying to sort things out, uh, it was, uh, you can hear a cricket in my office, in my home office, because uh, the phone wouldn't ring. And, it, it, and, and just as people start realizing that we're in it for the long haul, that this is the, as you mentioned, the new norm, uh, then now they're starting to say, okay, what can we do virtually? And so uh, we've developed nice modules to help uh, companies, to help individuals in, in how to deal with uh, living in this new normal and uh, you're right the phone is now starting to ring and uh you know we're back open for business a new way of doing business nevertheless though we're doing business so what is it the businesses are really looking for right now well then when uh when i get a call it's usually about uh team building resiliency and how to deal with isolation so so i basically start talking to the individual who calls so that I can get to know the audience and I get to know a little bit about what the business uh, is, what kind of business they're involved in, what are their core values. And then we tie all that into a uh, modules that, that work on teamwork, building teamwork, building the resiliency, the perseverance, and then uh, talking about how to best deal with social isolation. and some of the points that I discussed prior are what we go over in more detail. So basically it's human performance optimization. Companies are calling you to figure out how to optimize performance filtered in place. You hit the nail on the head, Adriana, because the most valuable resource a company has is human capital. It's human resource. So we need to invest in our people as a company and uh, and that's going to bear fruit farther and far down the line so the more we invest the better a company is going to be in a better position to deal with adversities such as what we're experiencing right now we need to practice good habits to uh, prevent the spread if, if if you have to go out then it makes sense to wear a mask it makes sense that whenever you reach a certain destination, first thing you should do is wash your hands because you probably touched the knob to open the door and you don't want to touch your face. Uh, and it's 20 seconds, warm water and soap. Uh, so have these good habits 
and 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 I think uh, we can we can uh, we can lick this thing. Uh, but the best you know news that I want to hear is that we have an FDA certified vaccine that will uh, help us get everything under control. And hopefully that's not in the too distant future that we'll hear news like that.